we are now going to be seeking absolute YouTube domination. And I'm gonna tell you how. What we have to talk about now is major updating of the content strategy. Good. We are now going to be seeking absolute YouTube domination. And I'm going to tell you how. Well, here's the thing. YouTube is kind of dead. The truth is. Yeah. You can't really grow that much on YouTube from, from a low level anymore. Mm -hmm. So we're not, you know, we're not going to ever be huge on YouTube, probably, because the, the way things have changed. However, just because you can't go mega huge on YouTube doesn't mean it's not worth it. And um, in the past few weeks, my subscriber count has not been really moving very much. Mm -hmm. And I think it's because I'm not uploading enough. I mean, I do a live stream. I do a live stream like once a week on average still uh, pretty regularly, but it's not enough to really get new subscribers. Yeah. So what we're going to do is a new kind of strategy that I've been thinking about. I feel like you're good at editing and you enjoy it and you're efficient with it. And what I, if I have one strength, it's pretty much like having a high volume of ideas yeah. and like being able to run my mouth like crazy. So since those two things are really easy for me and you're good at editing and efficient with it, mm -hmm. we're going to try a, a aggressive kind of high volume kind of upload strategy okay. is what I'm thinking. So what this is going to mean, I think, is we're going to, first of all, record pretty much everything okay. whenever we're together and uh, just try to make content out, of, content out of everything. That's the first principle. But the second principle is we're going to look for mostly kind of like 10 minute chunks is kind of the ideal. My understanding is that the algorithm rewards videos that are 10 minutes or longer okay. and we want to make them engaging. And I think the simple formula for making them really engaging, which I've kind of learned also from paying attention and reading stuff and experimenting is if there's one crucial thing, it's that you start at the beginning with something like really fascinating or uh, curious mm -hmm. or, exciting or whatever you have to lead with the, the thing that hooks them sure Start with and, and so th these are things we've never done like with my with my sure. with my content like i've never really done anything it's up until now it's all been just wild experimentation yeah. diy yeah, yeah. haphazard whatever just throw spaghetti at the wall yeah. And see what happens. So you're going for with, something more with, formulaic. But, no, no, no. But not, I mean, not in a bad sense. I mean, something is some kind of like just a little bit more strategic. Yeah. In in the following way. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so I think with just these few little improvements, mm -hmm. we can I can keep doing everything I'm doing as I do it naturally, and just be my myself to, completely. Yeah. But with a few little strategic <clears throat> great yeah. um, commitments, I think we can like have good results and uh, I'll see, I, I want to like all the things I do, I'll think about this as, as a, as an experiment, as a short term kind of pilot project. Mm -hmm. We'll try this for a few weeks and see what kind of results we get. Okay. Um, and so here's basically what I'm thinking. We, after, as we record kind of everything, whatever stuff like this, we will break it up into 10 minute chunks and something that we should do that, which we started a few weeks ago and never followed through mm -hmm. on is having the intro and the outro uh, visuals yes. that you started drafting. Yep. So I think the format we want to do, I don't like I don't like video formats with like lots of bells and whistles. Yep. I think what we do is every time we finish a 10 minute clip of something, you edit it into like a 10 minute roughly, mm -hmm. 11, 12, whatever, 13 minute clip. And then you find, you do the tactic, I'm sure you've seen it before, of basically like the most interesting or funny like moment Yes. In the video, gets tagged at the front. Yeah. Exactly, gets put at the front, and then do the little branding visualization yep. thing that you made, and uh, then go to the whole video. Let's try yeah. that. Yeah. Let's just try that. No other bells and whistles. No fancy editing required. Um, no nothing. Just go for volume. Sure. And I think the other thing is, if you don't mind, I would love to uh, show you how to upload. And do and if you could do that also, oh great! Yeah. Then we could be. I think we could be like a very powerful machine, because that's what, like my biggest bottleneck is. It's the it's the the tasks like yep. that. Um, so if we could get into a system where you're doing the editing and the uploading, mm -hmm. and I'm just fucking recording mad shit, then I think we could. I think that's I think that's our way to that's our that's what, the best thing we could do. I agree. Uh, yeah. And so, yeah, we're not going to be like making my stuff much more edited or fancier or anything, but I think just a little, I was trying to basically think of 
for someone like me who's like, I'm not, I'm not really trying to be a YouTuber. I'm not really trying to have some kind of like fancy brand mm -hmm. or anything, but I'm just trying to do those things just well enough to have the extra kind of effectiveness that, sure. that they have without trying to optimize for them or maximize mm -hmm. that. Um, so I, basically that meant I tried to look for what are the two or three simple things that we could improve mm -hmm. to get the most bang for our buck essentially in terms of, of, of putting in some effort to create content, video content at a slightly more effective level on, on the YouTube register. Sure. And I think those are basically it. We just will increase volume and we will just do that little editing trick that's common enough and probably works. So yeah. So for instance, this is the second video that we've done today in like less than a half hour. Right. And this will be a video and we'll just keep churning out things like this. And maybe some of them won't be that interesting, but maybe some of them will be interesting in ways we don't realize. Sure. Like I have found, I have found that sometimes when I post videos and I'm kind of like, this isn't that valuable. It's kind of like whatever, um, should I just scrap it? It's mm -hmm. not that good. Yeah. I will happen that someone likes, somewhere, some shit, yeah. well, maybe it doesn't go huge, okay. but, but someone, someone somewhere it, yeah. we'll you know. like emails me or yeah. writes a thoughtful comment sure. saying that they really value it. Yeah. So it's like you, creators don't often really have a good sense of what people value and what they don't value. True. This is another reason why I think volume and quantity is more important than uh, quality exactly, yeah. when it comes to internet stuff. Not when it comes to thought, like philosophy and science and doing actual intellectual work and True. writing books and things <clears> like that. There you want to optimize for quality in a certain way. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to making content on the internet and that whole game, yeah. I think uh, quantity is just so much more important for and the reason. variety too. I think people want that yeah kind True. of variety for sure. to hit all these different bases or whatever. True and, yeah. and variety. Yeah, although it's just intriguing. It's interesting to see you in all these different situations and talking about these yeah yeah various things. Yeah, thank you. And yeah. I think like even if I think gone are the days where you can like blow up on YouTube. So I think the idea of like getting really big on YouTube is not ever going to be a goal of yeah. mine. I, I don't think it happens anymore, mm -hmm. from what I can tell, from what all the people on what all the big YouTubers yeah. even say, like all the big YouTubers talk about how um, it's hardly even worth it for them anymore. And, and people are more and more big YouTubers mm -hmm. are basically moving all of their audience off YouTube into some sort of private yeah. thing or whatever. So in some ways I do think YouTube is a, is a sinking ship. However, for someone like me, video is just really valuable as a, another medium to just get the word out for the things I'm trying to think about mm -hmm. and the ideas I'm trying to express and develop. And I do think that for someone like me, I'm like a nobody on YouTube. I only have like 4,000 followers. I think, oh, I, <laughs> I think if I, if I continue to make lots of videos in a more aggressive schedule, mm -hmm. uh, higher quantity, I suspect over the next year or two, I could get to like 20,000 subscribers or something. And that's probably worth it, right? It's not like, it's, I, it's not, I don't think you're, nowadays going to make a living off of YouTube or anything, but as one part of a much larger system, which yeah. is what it is for me, uh, I, I feel like it's worth, if I, if I could do that, it would be worth trying that. Um, so my expectations are modest in a way, but I still think that it, that is worth it and you never know what's going to happen. So true. Um, what do you think? I, I think that that's a very game? good trajectory. Yes. I'm totally down in game and all in sweet. So what I'm thinking for today is, we will, I have to have a conference call with someone at two, mm -hmm. but what we could do is maybe when we're done with this, we'll do one more. Mm -hmm. And then while I'm doing the conference call, we can work on you getting set up with the workflow of, Sweet. of yeah. editing and uploading. Cause I'm going to have to give, I use an app called TubeBuddy, um, yeah. which basically just makes certain uploading tasks easier, mm -hmm. more, you can automate some things and cool. use kind of templates and stuff like that. So I can set you up with that on your browser, on your computer. Great and give you my login and stuff like that. And while I'm doing that, you can edit and upload like the three videos we've done today. Um, does that sound like a good idea? Yeah, and then great. when I'm done, we can reconvene. Or if you have, if you have, if you need things from me, I can Perfect. help you with that. Yeah, no, it sounds like a plan. All right. Good. Um, all right, sweet. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, so you can go crazy trying to optimize the YouTube upload, like looking for the perfect tags mm -hmm. with the right balance of volume and competition and trying to get the perfect title that's just super interesting and you can make like really fancy thumbnails and all of that. We don't have a big team, like it's just you and me really. So my sense of things is 
it's worth it to do a good job on a few of those aspects that matter the most, mm -hmm. but to not get too carried away trying to make everything perfect or optimal. And specifically what I've generally done is I focus on using all the possible tags and I do try to pick the best tags possible, but I don't go sleuthing like crazy through all possible tags and looking using TubeBuddy to evaluate them. I will sometimes do it for a couple minutes, mm -hmm. but I just focus on making sure that I exhaust all the space that they're, that you're given to use tags. And I try to do a combination of the high volume ones like philosophy or science, and then the niche long tail ones. <clears throat> just do a combination of those. And the other thing is the thumbnail is worth trying to get right as best you can. So what that means is if we're doing something that's kind of physical and interesting looking, it makes sense to spend like the three minutes using the TubeBuddy thumbnail creator to find the one frame that's like most weird or intriguing that that's going to make people want to click out of curiosity or whatever. That's worth it because the main variables on YouTube are the click through rate mm -hmm. and then the watch time. So the question, the click through rate is when people see the thumbnail, what percentage of those people who see the thumbnail are clicking through to watch the video? That's the click through rate. Okay. And then just how long do they watch? Those are the two variables that are most important for determining whether a video gets boosted and recommended. So the thumbnail is actually super important for getting traction. Um, we might talk about in the future, maybe making some like dope thumbnails in Photoshop or whatever and using a template to do that. But let's put that off for now. Just pick the frame that is, that is the best, especially if we're doing something physical later we might add in thumbnails. I think it is worth it. I think we just don't quite yet have the capacity to to f focus on that. Let's focus on that later, that's what I would think. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much all there is to it other than when I schedule them out in advance, schedule them sometime in the morning because the first 24 hours is the most important. Mm -hmm. So you want them to benefit from the whole daytime when people, when most of your audience is awake and up and about. And most of my audience is, I think on the East Coast in America, generally, but m most on the East Coast. So whatever, um, just any time in the morning, I think is fine. So yeah, that's pretty much it. You can leave all the other defaults pretty much on and try to do your best with these things, but don't overthink them. It shouldn't take more than like 10 minutes um, to once it's done uploading to get it out. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. The other two key things though are the cards and the end screen that that is necessary and important. Mm -hmm. So we'll work on getting some templates set up because that's what I had with TubeBuddy, but TubeBuddy seems to be broken with the new YouTube updates. Um, in if we don't have that, then uh, I'll show you just how to do manually the mm -hmm. the cards and the end screens because that the cards are I'm pretty sure they do have some success in driving people to Patreon, and because that's what I use the cards for. Sure. And uh, the end screens are kind of important for, yeah, getting people to watch more or whatever after. And especially now that we're doing short videos, I think the end screens matter because hopefully people will be watching through the whole videos.